I'm pretty much tired of hearing you guys complain about this Naruto to Barto Shinobi Striker rated T Naruto game being pay to win. So I decided to show you that it is more skill based than you initially thought. Now I do say DLCs will help you, but it isn't the bottom line. I think a major issue is a lot of people, the new players are skipping over the tutorial that teaches them how to do a lot of things and they rely on YouTube videos instead of just doing the tutorial that the game provides. I will say running up walls is pretty much fundamentals but there's a lot of things that you guys don't know that the tutorial goes ahead and explains. One of the major issues I've ever seen, especially in face-off right now, a lot of the new players have no idea how to lock on to their target. All you have to do is you see that analog stick, go ahead and mash it down. Because if you don't, you will literally just attack anywhere. Now, I've seen people literally fighting me and switch targets in the middle of a fight because they're most likely not locked on. Another thing that hits you guys in the face is literally guarding and deflecting. If you guard too long, your guard will get broke and you can deflect. A lot of people, and especially new players, really struggle on that one. I've actually seen some veteran players that don't block enough. Now today, I'm gonna show you what's the difference between your free to play and my free to play. You don't need DLCs to be good. You just need a little bit of skill. All right, so today I'm going to give you four builds that are free to play. You don't need any DLCs. You may need a little bit of time played, but that's not the biggest deal. These are free builds that you can rock right now. You don't need DLCs for that. I got you. Don't worry. Let's get into it. There's going to be time codes below, depending on what role you like. First build today is everyone's favorite right now. We're going to be rocking that Sharingan, which you can pick up from the Kakashi VR Master. This allows you to sub with the substitute but it doesn't take your special gauge allows you to get out of sticky situations if you're into that our second jutsu is leaf rising wind which you can get it from the rock lee vr master it allows you to do an upwards kick and then this allows you to combo afterwards now if you're going to use this i recommend the ink clone use whatever clone you want i personally like seven heavenly breasts as our ultimate here allows you to get health over time and instantly basically heals you back up now i am rocking claws on this but not chakra claws ninja tools kunai boost close range attack speed boost your max health and once in a million for all the skills on our clothes regardless of the game mode this build should work for you now basically all you have to do is run in there and do your leaf rising win it should travel a great distance but i recommend that you don't use your leaf rising win to be honest with you as a person to transport you to the person i would do a little light attack and then focus them but that's just me do whatever you need to do leaf rising win combo afterwards even if he subs you can still try Ooh, well you suck a beats as a dlc and you know well that dlc didn't really help him on that one did it guys now i will say if you do have these scientific ninja tool weapons for attackers go ahead and use that because they are the best but i think chakra claws are a little bit overused even though i use them in literally every build video i can see how some people don't like them i will say claws have a similar combo but do not have that very annoying kiba type spin attack which i personally really like but i know people hate it because uh, they're not get out of it but anyways that's neither here or there so you're probably wondering what is the deal with kunai versus paralysis so kunai to me is a little bit better because you can kunai somebody it stunned them for just a second just enough for you can do your combo and if you do four kunai it will actually hard knock them and that's really good to get somebody off your base I think kunais are mad underrated. If you can get Paper Bomb Kunai, go ahead and rock those. But if you don't, Paralysis Tag just isn't it for me. But if you rock Paralysis Tag, more power to you. If you're more comfortable with that, I highly recommend it. But this build is actually super good, especially for free players. Now, again, you can sub out the Ink Clone for whatever you want. I personally like it because I think the Ink Obstruction is absolutely ridiculous. Here is a prime example for me is someone having a DLC but not really using it to its full effect. Now, this guy might be a Master Shinobi, but he's not really using the DLC correctly. A Zone Strike is a great way to combo into your modder fan. And he also has a moderate DLC, so he could throw out a Majestic if he wanted to, if he was on range. But again, these claws are a little bit undervalued since the Scientific Ninja Tool came out, Chakra Claws. But that is not the problem. The problem is that he doesn't know how to use his DLC because he doesn't have that skill. You guys need to practice. Go to the tutorials before you really buy these DLCs. Bro, how did you get your character that big, bro? That's different. Nah, y'all are going crazy lately. All right, now we're on the range. Lightning Shuriken Net. You can get this after you 100 games of range. Now, next up, we have the Super B Scroll, which you can grab that from the Zai VR Master. This allows you to target action speed and lower that thing and deals a moderate damage 
water clone jutsu you can grab this from the kasame vr master this lowers defense now toads blade you can grab that from the itachi vr master this allows you to do a light attack stun and maybe kill them if not you have the second phase with the sword now this will knock them out for a while i'm rocking kusanagi sword Sinbon, all geared up, robust fighter, and battle hardened. Range is not that hard. A lot of people are a little bit scared to play range because it is the weakest in health and defense right next to healer, but healers can actually heal themselves. Now, Lightning Shuriken Net will actually stun your opponents, and you can actually do some crazy thing if it hits twice. Now, you're not double casting it. A lot of times, Lightning Shuriken Net will stay up, and they will get double hit by that. So then you use your Lions, and it's the more hits that it does with Lightning Shuriken Net, the more damage it will do. Now, I do like the Lions to lower the speed of my opponents, but I also like the Ninja Tool damage boost because Sinbons do crazy damage with that, my guy. Lightning Shuriken Net is also really good to have with your teammates, and here is why, because it sets them up for combos. It's really good as a support range because you can actually stun people from healing. You can stop people from moving so your attack can get to people quicker, and especially if you have an annoying attacker on the other team that defense is gonna struggle to slow them down but you have a jutsu that will slow them down immensely so keep that in mind when you're using lions and maybe it's not doing the most amount of damage but it is being the most effective as a teammate type ability i also really 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 like the sin bond because it's real quick People don't normally block it because they're not paying attention. And I do like the Kusanagi combos better because of the light attack stun. Let me show you Toad's Blade real quick. So right here, my teammates are actually about to get Planetary Devastation. But don't worry, I got it. Now, the first hit did not kill the opponent. But the second hit, where the sword comes down, did. Now, I will say, after you do kill your enemy, and even if you kill your enemy on the first strike, you have an opportunity to target somebody else with the Toad's Blade coming down. And you will steal that opponent for a long time. I'm saying more than 20 seconds they have to sit there and look at their selection screen of what class they want to do and they're going to come for you regardless after you hit them with the Totska. I didn't get it all on tape, but listen, I know this guy chased me for about 20 seconds after he came back, even though he was in the lobby for 20 seconds. For our defense build, we're going to be running Sand Shield, which you can grab this from the Gara VR Master. This allows you to reset Ninjutsu and Ninja Tool cooldowns with contact. This allows you to create a wall of sand. Next up, we have A-Tribe Grimm's Palm Rotation, which allows you to deflect and reflect any incoming ninjutsu or ninja tools. This allows you also to hit people off the base if they make contact with you, and this will allow you to seal their jutsus for a split time. And after you use the palm rotation, this allows you to be invincible for a short time. Next up, I recommend that you use the Clang Clone Jutsu. This is from the Datara VR Master. This allows a little clay clone to explode, and it's also a free jutsu. So keep this in mind when you're thinking about why do I need to do this? Water Style Super Shark Bomb is from the Kasame VR Master. This also resets Jutsus and does a ton of damage and goes through Water Pillar. Next up, I'm using Claw Club, and I'm using a special type outfit, so keep that in mind. And I'm using Purple Lightning, which is in the shop as this video is coming out right now. A lot of times you will face people that go try hard and already have those DLCs, but Water Shark Jutsu is a DLC slayer, so keep that in mind. And also, do not be afraid of the Clay Jutsu, because it will explode. Now, keep this in mind, please. Purple Lightning has a super armor effect that allows you to basically do immense amount of damage, especially on the contact. Watch out because it does have a shorter range that you will fight a lot of people with time space hop. Just keep that in mind too. I know it's to keep in mind like 70 times. But again, I want you guys to think about this stuff when you're playing because a lot of times the DLCs aren't really doing too much. And this guy definitely has DLCs, but I'm really not losing much ground with him because this is a meta defense build. Now, I definitely wouldn't recommend you rock this on combat and rock this on a base or a flag defending. Again, purple lightning, man. Think about that. Now, again, you just have to outsmart the person that you're fighting this guy is pretty low already and i haven't taken much damage because my build is just better than his and even though he has dlc so keep that in mind movement skill rotations timing of jutsus except i messed that timing up but that's neither here or there now i'm fighting 2v1 now i may get ulted but that's okay i'm still doing a really good job of keeping the base or keeping two people there at all times now this guy is definitely gonna 100 ult me i just hard to know that from just 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 knowing it i just i got three people here now i'm yeah there ain't no way okay let me go ahead and pop this out water shark jutsu thank you for playing i knocked three people back and they had their jutsus reset as well so three jutsus reset jutsus for us our ultimate our two jutsus and we have a super armor and clay that'll knock people off it is contacted oh. gg 
strategy. Lastly, we have our healer build for you, Heavy Boulder Jutsu, which you can grab at the start or you play 100 games, either one. Heavy Boulder Jutsu gives you immense defense boost and will break people's guard and slow them down immensely. Highly recommend that you do try that build out. Cellular Extraction right now is the best healer Jutsu in the game and it is free. It's from the Soccer VR Master. This allows you to have a burst heal that removes all status elements and does a burst heal again that heals about three-fourths on activation. And it has a huge range that you can heal your allies with. Shadow Clone Explode or Shadow Clone Jutsu is a really good Jutsu for your substitution because it subs you so far away. It doesn't do any damage or any negative status element to your enemy. But again, we want to be sub far away. If we are a healer, if you use substitution jutsu, you're just gonna get subbed right next to him, and we don't want that at all because we want to keep you alive. Feather Illusion Jutsu is from Kabuto. It is one of the best Gen Jutsus in all of Shinobi Striker. It puts people to sleep, takes away their jutsus, takes away their substitution, and takes away their ninja tools. And will pitfall people if there's a pitfall map. Top skill first blood, robust fighter, battle hardened. We're also gonna be throwing out our healing seal and our ninja sword. Let's start why this build. First of all, this build allows you to have a a long longevity in the game because people like to jump the healer and we want you to stay upright and we need to boost that defense and if you slow an aggressive attacker especially with your heavy boulder and boost that defense you're gonna live longer long sword has an immense giant range that you can grab from because ninja swords just go crazy in this game for whatever reason cellular extraction you just need to heal your allies it's just simple as that there's not too much i can tell you about that but this build is literally free right now and you will honestly close the gap if you want to be a support type and honestly if you're really just playing solo queue and you run this build i guarantee you if you're not playing a four stack or a three stack you're gonna do pretty good as a healer now your heal tag is a burst heal as well and it'll heal about one third I really like Feather Illusion to get rid of Jutsus and rid of Ninja Tools and allows you to pitfall people, which is honestly the best thing about it. And it's been meta for a long, long time. People to this day, since season one, still run that. So if it's not broke, don't fix it. Guys, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for listening.